recently dedicated at Schenectady, New York, during a two-day air research demonstration, was this new General Electric Air Research Laboratory. It will house the staffs which, during wartime, developed such outstanding flight advances as the turbo supercharger, the pressurized cabin, remote control for gun turrets, and the jet engine. Here's a cutaway model of it. The engine and the Lockheed P-80 shooting star, which is powered by it, were kind of the keynotes of the show. They exemplified American research at its best. As the show got underway, every kind of plane imaginable was lined up on the field. This is Lockheed's Constellation. Sitting beside her is the Douglas Skymaster, developed for war but already in widespread civilian use. And down the line, a Boeing Stratocruiser, again a wartime project, now turned to peacetime needs. The super fortress behind it is no midget, nor is this flying boxcar, the Fairchild Packet. The eager thousands who jammed onto the field in spite of overcast weather got their eyes full, all right. They came early for the dedication and show, and they stayed late. Host to them all was Mr. Charles E. Wilson, president of General Electric. Big names in aviation were everywhere. They came from Washington, the services, from airlines and plane makers. Laboratory exhibits and skyborne demonstrations both kept them busy. The one holding forth tomorrow's promise, the other proving how much air research has already accomplished. There's Captain Leroy Simpler of the Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics. And nearby, GE Vice Presidents Prince and Pear. Out on the field were the finest fighting planes in the world, Vought Corsairs, a Grumman Bearcat, and three Tiger Cats. A North American Mustang. There's a Douglas DC-3. And the prima donnas of the day, the P-80 Shooting Stars, most powerful of the world's single-engine jet planes. The crowd also got a look at many civilian planes, in which the results of wartime research are already incorporated. Planes that can't spin, with a steering wheel instead of a joystick. Two and four seaters, cheap to buy, easy to fly. Hold on a minute. There's a big Stratocruiser coming in from Washington with guests aboard. It was like that all day. Planes arriving and departing. Here's someone that's just come in. It's the Assistant Secretary of War for Air, Mr. W. Stewart Symington. An Honor Guard of Marines was on the field, and they saluted Mr. Symington while he went to the stands for a brief radio broadcast. And while he's congratulating GE on its expanded facilities for air research, let's look around at the celebrities. Recognize the man in the center? It's Jimmy Doolittle, with GE Vice President Muir on the right, and H.F. Guggenheim of New York. And here's Admiral Richardson, Deputy Chief of the Bureau of Aeronautics. He looks pretty pleased with the show. There's General Stratemeyer and John Miller, GE's Aviation Division Manager. But here's another interruption. Up from Baltimore is the Navy's giant flying boat, the Martin Mars, buzzing the field. No water to land on up here, so she turns and roars back to her Baltimore base. Now for a little proof that even the jet air world of tomorrow won't be completely masculine. The lady is Lucille Rubin of International News Service. In just a minute, the twin-engine Bell Era Comet will take her up for woman's first ride in an American jet plane. There she goes now. It certainly seems to be less and less a man's world. Maybe someday seeing a stylish coiffure in a jet plane cockpit will be an old hat. Miss Rubin looks none the worse for riding at 500 miles an hour, but looks can be deceiving. About eight minutes after being congratulated here, she keeled over in a complete blackout. Hear that, men? And now here's a Martin Mariner demonstrating a rocket-assisted takeoff. 
See the rocket exhaust? Called JATOs, they get this huge plane off the ground in half the distance normally required. The control box in this naval officer's hand lets him be the brains of this small catapult-launched drone. He can control its flight perfectly from the ground or air. The little drone was still flying when one of GE's big flying laboratories, a converted super fortress, took off with a jet engine mounted in its bomb bay. Used to test the jet's airborne performance, the B-29 incorporates in its own construction hundreds of other GE contributions to modern flight. Superchargers, pressurized cabin, motors and control, radio and radar, turrets, instruments, plastics, lamps. All departments of General Electric contribute to its stellar performance. A few minutes later, the giant Globemaster went up with 15 jeeps stored in its fuselage, enough to fill several boxcars. One of the plane's elevators is lowering a jeep out now. In a second, it will drive away under its own power. And there goes the elevator for Jeep number two. Just about this time, another top flight serviceman came in from Washington by special plane. It's Admiral Joseph Reeves, one time Admiral of the US fleet, now retired. He comes as an unexpected, but very welcome guest. But another demonstration is ready on the field. It was hard to keep your eye on any one thing very long. This time, three Marine pilots are taking their Grumman Tiger Cats up. There goes Tiger Cat number one, a normal, easy takeoff. The same with number two. But watch number three. Looks like he's climbing up a stone wall. With their twin engines, the Tiger Cat is powerful enough to drop a bomb load and then outfight the lightest, fastest fighter. Let's watch them for a minute. just weren't any letdowns in this show. Here comes an Army P-51 Mustang with a war-proved record of being one of the fastest and deadliest sky warriors. But today they've turned a shooting star loose. Watch the P-80 overtake the Mustang. Yes, modern research is always obsoleting the old with something new. New? Well, this odd-looking plane is an example of research with a capital R. It's Igor Sikorsky's newest helicopter, a four-place job that's broken many helicopter records for speed and climbing power. She's quite an improvement over even mid-war models, and some even newer developments will be flight-tested here soon. That's Mr. Sikorsky himself, the pioneer. Even before he began to make planes hover motionless in the air and climb straight up, his fame was worldwide. This flying bug caught everyone's attention. It's a Kellett helicopter, the tailless XR-8. Still experimental, it shows great promise and uses two counter-rotating props forward, no small one aft. Think they'll ever use these babies to sell good humors on street corners?
The climax of the entire day was the inauguration of jet airmail service. This letter to the president from Mr. Symington was delivered in Washington barely an hour after this picture was taken. Jet airmail went also to New York and Chicago, giving a hint to an airmail future as fast as sound itself. General Doolittle spoke of continuing in peace the wartime research to which both the services and civilian groups contributed so much, he was speaking to all of us. The new flight test laboratory is wholly dedicated to such a continuation. Props and jets, their swift flight is today's answer to American creative skill. What's for tomorrow? <laughs>